Hey everyone, welcome to episode 10 of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. If you have been following along, thank you. If not, go check out the other nine episodes. In our previous episode, we talked about some basics of design options to study our kitchen and some different options for it. In this episode, we are actually going to start building the kitchen. So we're going, we've are going. we decided on a design option. Um, I've done quite a few more sketches, um, as you can see from some of the sketches on screen right now. Um, I've taken some of those generic cabinet families and I drew some more detail in um, while going back and forth between the computer and drawing and back and forth to sort of get a sense of how I want it to be. And today we're going to be working on the north wall. And so I keep calling it the north wall because it's on the north side of the building. Um, but this is kind of what what is uh, going to be uh, known as sort of the utility wall. This is where our range is. This is where our refrigerator is. There's actually some dog kennels as part of this. But we're also going to include windows and interesting ways to introduce light into the space. So so this is going to be a little unique of a video in the sense that I've taken an entire hour of just recording me working, basically reduce it down to 12 minutes because I didn't want to leave anything out. And I wanted to show you guys the importance of having a quality family library to pull from. Um, when it comes to things like cabinets especially. Which brings me to our sponsor for this video series. I'm not going to play the uh, little jingle this time because basically this entire episode you get to see what the revitfamily.biz cabinet families are like because I'm going to use them to build this whole north wall. So as you're watching this video, if you're thinking, hey, these cabinets uh, are, <laughs> could be useful for me, then you can head on over to revitfamily.biz using the link above or below um, and use offer code 2022REVITKID to save 20%. So thank you, Brenton, for offering to sponsor the series, but also offering 20% off of anyone who decides to uh, go um, buy a bundle or a package using the code here. I have been using Brenton's families for quite some time now. You're going to see throughout this episode why I think they're so valuable. And I think you're going to see how it can you can quickly build a kitchen um, when you have the right setup. I know, I know what most of you are going through is the out-of-the-box families mixed with grabbing whatever you can anytime you're building a vanity or a kitchen or something like that and you end up with these piecemeal things um, that they don't look good rendered they don't always look great graphically and they just become frustrating to deal with and so what i'm going to show you with my workflow which is kind of unique one of my favorite things about brenton's families and i suggest even if you don't uh, um, purchase families from brenton or from somewhere else if you have a library um, to create a sample file because um, when it comes to things like cabinets and some of these uh, content, yes, you could use a content browser and there are family browsers that help, but having um, a sample file built with all of the types ready to go is really a really easy way to, to, to pick and pull from where you need without scrolling through thousands and thousands of options, types, text, and so on and so forth. So what you're gonna see throughout this entire video is actually me opening the sample file that comes with your, your package from revitfamily.biz from Brenton. Um, and I have it open the entire time and I'm actually pulling families in. So my template does not have um, these families in there for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because these are the modern kitchen families and there's a craftsman style as well as a more traditional contemporary or more traditional style um, of, of cabinet. And I don't want all of those in my files. Um, and, and two, because um, whenever I'm doing a project, I can just use the sample files like this. So what you're going to see is actually um, maybe interesting to some because some people may not I think this is a used, usable workflow, but I actually have the the sample file open and I'm pulling in families that I need. The other thing you're going to see is I'm doing a lot of uh, modifying of the families. Having fully parametric customizable families is super useful. Um, I do a lot of uh, stretching and pushing and pulling and a lot of new type creation. What you will notice is that I'm editing um, the families and I'm making new types a lot. And I'm renaming those types very specifically. So I'm not just editing a cabinet that's 36 inches wide, saying duplicate, and then just changing the size and saying OK. That would mean it would be, let's say, 36 inches with the lovely little parentheses 2 afterwards, um, even though I just changed it to 42 inches. So you'll notice that I am very carefully, as I change the size of something, I'm duplicating the type, I'm changing the size, and I'm renaming it to 
accurately reflect the size of that type. I know, I know, it sounds crazy that I'm stressing this, but I know you all have opened models before that has casework 36 inch one, casework 36 inch two, casework 36 inch three, and so on and so forth. And you've got 15 casework types that by name are all 36 inches, but when you place them, they're all over the place with sizes. So I just wanted to stress that because I do think it's an important thing to keep in mind. So without further ado, let's jump in. I'm going to try my best to narrate over this and, and, and use this sort of one hour of work um, condensed into 12 minutes to show you guys how quickly you can actually build these things in Revit when you have the right content ready. Not to mention building an entire kitchen wall in one hour is pretty cool. So uh, so let's jump into it. All right, so here's the kitchen as we, as you all know it, um, with the generic model cabinets. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to delete them. I could have left them in there as reference um, as maybe a design option or something, or even just left them there, but I'm gonna delete them because I, I have the idea of what I wanted. And now I'm just gonna start using some reference planes to line up where I want the height. And here's the sample file. So you notice the sample file has all the families laid out ready to go. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just copying and pasting them into my project. I'm going to center the range uh, within the, the two windows, just using some dimensions. I have an interior elevation. And so now I have a couple views open. For those of you that don't know, um, TW and WT is how you can tile windows and then remove the tile uh, in Revit. Um, and so this is super useful where I have the sample file open, a 3D view open, an elevation view open, and a plan view open of the project. All right, so now I can jump back and forth, copy and paste, see different things, and I'm working in this four view palette um, to make it a lot easier to jump between views. So now I'm just bringing in some overhead cabinets. Um, as far as the design is concerned, um, I'm going with a scheme where um, there's these um, different colored uh, overhead cabinets that um, are going to provide a lot more storage, but they kind of um, pay homage to the soffit that exists in most 1950s uh, styles, as well as um, there were there were some some references to um, um, square cubby hole uh, cubby style cabinets um, uh, in sort of the upper so soffit location. Um, these end up being square by the end and having this really nice um, pattern to them. Now I'm just selecting and moving. I'm using mirror on my keyboard. MM is the keyboard shortcut um, for mirror. Um, if you hold control, it copies or uncopies the mirror. I'm gonna copy in my uh, range, uh, double range oven uh, sort of casework piece here. One thing you will notice about Brenton's cabinets is they are all not hosted, um, which is extremely helpful uh, depending on how your project is set up. Um, but when it comes to design options or groups and so on, um, that's where this stuff can, can really help. So there you notice, I'm duplicating this type and you notice I renamed it correctly and uh, renamed it to match the size. So now you'll also notice that I go through a few different iterations of, um, of this range uh, casework setup. Uh, by the way, right there, um, um, LW uh, is, is the quick way to turn line weights on and off so you can see these more detailed line areas. Um, you'll also notice that these cabinet families have small reveals between all their doors and, 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 and um, drawers. So when it comes to rendering, what you'll see is they look really, really great. Um, but when it comes to this north wall, what you'll see is I, I play with quite a few options um, with how how those those cabinets, those base cabinets around the range are, are, are organized from um, drawers to double doors, etc. Now you get a sense of how it's starting to come together in 3D. Here's what I was talking about with the sort of cubby upper cabinets. I'm gonna ray this across. Um, and of course this will all get adjusted uh, in time, which you will see, um, but I'm sort of creating that, um, that pattern of this sort of more square um, cubby on the top, which ends up being a white color versus the, the cherry wood color of the rest of the cabinets. playing with some of the visibility settings of the family. Keyboard is rotate if you want to know the keyboard shortcuts to it. 
So this area here is actually going to be a appliance uh, cubby. Uh, so this is gonna be sort of an area where you can put some countertop appliances and close them. And then above it, I'm gonna do some open shelves. So some way to, to disturb the, the openings of the window, add a little unique um, area to display some, some stuff um, and, and sort of add a nice little flair to the design, but also have an area to put things like toasters or mixers or stuff that maybe you don't want to see on the counter all the time um, in a beautiful mid-century modern house like this. I'm bringing in some open shelves, again, just copying them in from the, from the sample project. Here I'm using reference planes to uh, line up the, the pattern of the upper cabinets with the lower cabinets. Um, so I've got that square sort of repetitive piece of those upper cabinets and now I'm, I'm bringing them down to, to align and sort of redo um, the casework below to make sure we have that nice uniform. One thing you'll notice too is that uh, in with these specific families, um, the width parameter is a instance parameter as well as some of the height parameters, whereas the depth is a type. And I wasn't really sure about that at first, but honestly, it makes it so much easier to work with when the width parameter is an instance parameter on casework um, in the sense that uh, as you're seeing what I'm doing here, uh, I'm still using reference planes to make them not 36 in some wackadoodle uh, fraction. Um, but, um, but I'm able to push and pull these really quickly without dealing with uh, you know, multiple different types and figuring out the math of which one needs to go where and, and so on and so forth. Placing in the uh, countertop, you can see I'm actually using um, the island uh, out of the box countertop here. Um, it doesn't need a hole in it and I, I just like using the island one because it doesn't have a backsplash. It's all, it's instance parameters in all direction. Um, you will see when I do the actual island that we're going to do something a little different, but um, for now um, that is what it is. Now I'm just playing with the windows um, and I decide to do uh, windows in between basically all of the casework. Now you're starting to see a little in 3D there make these windows the same. It's a nice 36 inch cabinet. So we'll do something a little less than 36 inch for the window. Again, making a new type, renaming it the exact width and height that it's supposed to be, changing the size. Now, as I mentioned before, there's gonna be these kennels. Um, uh, the, these clients have a dog, they actually foster dogs, which is kind of neat. Um, so they have uh, two large dog kennels that they, that they like to build into the, into the casework. And so um, what I'm doing here is actually just laying the structure and foundation for the, the kennel. Um, we're actually going to talk about how I do it in the next video, um, how I actually make the kennel doors. But, uh, but for this, I'm just putting a nice uh, spacer and then I'm going to put a drawer on the bottom and then that's going to be where the, where the dog kennels end up being. Uh, if you're doing a, a house where maybe it's a desk or something like that, I mean, this is kind of a similar idea where you, you would just need a drawer with an open space below. And then I didn't like how the, the, the upper cabinets did not um, sort of, uh, I, I didn't like having the white upper cabinets that were deeper than the other ones, so I decided to go with um, those being the same wood material above the above the microwave. I think I ended up actually using a different um, uh, type for the oven um, that, that Brenton had made, um, just so that I had more flexibility with the, the casework above. Again, the, the sample family came, sample project came and helped in handy there because I can just go look for the type that I needed. Just modifying this now to match uh, to match all the heights that I need, putting a little spacer in between the microwave and the uh, stove. And now the deeper cabinets are actually going to be that same um, wooden color as the as the lower cabinets. This is going to be an upper cabinet for uh, above the fridge. 
Um, eventually I put a fridge fan, a refrigerator family in here. I actually eventually find a nice a smeg uh, uh, family, um, which is awesome. But uh, for now, I think I leave it open for this for this session. <music> I decide to interrupt the uh, the square um, setup over here and go with uh, two larger rectangles uh, for the above, just because I didn't like the way it was it was terminating. I'm of course, flipping this out so we have two drawers on each side. A little bit of symmetry there. And there we have it. We got our north wall just about complete. All case worked up. So let's jump into uh, Enscape and we'll take a look at how it looks. There we have it. Here's our here's our current north wall. <clears throat> We're going to be adding detail as time goes on, but I think you're starting to see how this comes together. You can also see how incredibly awesome these families look in Enscape, <laughs> even in white mode before adding materials. And you can start seeing the design. Uh, this utility wall to the north. Um, there's a table and chairs now starting to get a sense of the scale. Um, there's the island, um, and everything is kind of making you uh, peer out towards the view which is which is behind us here so um, starting to see a sense of how this thing is coming together um, what you'll see over, over the next uh, few episodes is we're going to build this island here um, looking out uh, there's the view there that's that's the view we're going to look for um, you're going to build this island here looking out we're going to start adding detail. We're going to add some some tile to the backsplash. We're going to start adding lights. We're going to start adding materials um, and really getting ready to to develop this scene um, to sort of to present this to the clients. Um, again, this is I would consider this more of schematic design. But the great thing is, um, for those of you um, who do know Revit really well, you know that um, spending time up front uh, in schematic design to do this stuff to this level of detail um, only benefits you in the long run when it comes to actually having to make documents and construction documents uh, as we move on. So I know that was a lot and it was really fast, but I hope it was helpful for you guys to just sort of see how this all unfolds. Just to reiterate the process again, you know, we had existing conditions, we demoed out some stuff, um, we printed um, a floor plan and some elevations. We traced and we sketched over it. Then we went into Revit. We used these generic families to start laying it out to scale. We used Enscape to see how it looked. We printed again. We sketched over it again. We went back and forth. And now we're actually filling in the detail after we made some decisions from that process. And now we're working our way towards something that we can present to the client to see what their thoughts are on this design. So I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Again, thank you to Brenton of RevitFamily.biz. Again, hit the link below. Uh, use 2022 uh, Revit Kit as your promo code to save. I hope you guys can see from this video alone how valuable these families can be for this particular type of work. Um, and, uh, and I hope you learned something today. So uh, with that, uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up or a like or a comment if you're enjoying this. And uh, I'll see you next time.